I told you, you yellow belly, we don't have any gold, but we've got plenty of lead. <laughs> and you just got some of it. All right, Wild Bill Hickok here. Yep, it's me, Wild Bill Hickok, uh, with my 45s. Thought I'd dress up a little bit today and do a little video on guns of the Wild West. Uh, kill a couple birds with one stone here. I want to do a kind of an overview of some of the guns of the 1870s and 1880s uh, for my uh, viewers out there in YouTube land. And uh, we're reading Shane in the classes I teach, so uh, I thought I might show it to my students and let them uh, have a closer look at the gun that uh, and guns uh, that Shane carried so that uh, they get a little better uh, perspective on that and actually see one, a real one fired other than the Hollywood version. So, Colt single action, I want to show you again. And uh, you've seen some of these in my other videos. This is, a, this is going to be kind of targeted toward uh, maybe novice shooters or newbies or people that maybe don't know a lot about it uh, yet. And I'm going to shoot the shotgun and I'm going to shoot the lever action gun. The single action Colt was probably the most common handgun in the Wild West, although there were many others. I'm well aware of the Smith and Wessons and some of the others and Remingtons. The uh, double barrel shotgun was very, very common. And then the lever action and the 1873, which you'll see here in a second. All right. So the Colt single action, the reason it's single action is, remember, you've seen this in my other videos, you have to cock it before it'll fire. Now this is unloaded in the interest of time. I'm going to go ahead and point it down range, pull the trigger, click. Now this gun will not fire unless the hammer is cocked. That's why it's called a single action. It'll fire one way. You know, you've got to cock it before it'll fire. I can pull the trigger all day, nothing happens, right? So unlike a modern police revolver, where you can pull the trigger and which actually cocks it, you know? And then of course a semi-automatic, which is completely different, right? So this is the old single action. This was called the single action, the Colt's single action army because it was adopted by the military in 1873. In this configuration, in this length barrel, seven and a half inch, uh, that's pretty much what it looked like. This one was made in 1971. It's a second generation Colt, but they really haven't changed much uh, since 1873. Just minor little, little tweaks here and there. This is the gun uh, I, I often show, uh, speaking of Shane or, or John Wayne, you know, John Wayne like grips like this, kind of the, uh, the ivory grips and uh, some other cowboys too, or stag. But uh, the gun that Shane carries in the novel, that is. Now in the movie, it's totally different. But in the novel, he's carrying a gun with uh, kind of a, a grip that would look something like this. I think he has finger grooves in it. Uh, it doesn't tell us what his barrel length is in the novel. Uh, could have been a seven and a half inch. It could be could be this length right here. Yeah, it's just no way of knowing. Or it could be the five and a half in the middle. You know, it could be this length. But it is a blue gun that's described in the novel uh, to look like this, and that might be what he's carrying. Okay. As a gunfighter, he might be carrying a five and a half inch or a shorter gun. It's hard to know. It just doesn't, the author doesn't tell us. But that's kind of what his gun would look like. Single action, as it's described, you know, just as I pointed out, you got to cock it to pull the trigger, and that's what it looks like. To unload it, you know how you do it. I just did that. Uh, or will do it on uh, with my other gun. Let me pull my nickel out, my other one. Yeah, yeah I just fired it, so I'm going to half cock it. I'm going to get that brass out, punch it out with the ejector rod. And again, you look at my other videos if you want to get more uh, close-ups of how those operate. All right. So that's a five and a half inch barrel. This was the four three quarters, and then this is the seven and a half. All right. Colt single action army, fun to shoot, uh, a blast. Now this is the gun that was the predecessor to the Colt single action army. This is uh, the old cabin ball, operated in some ways the same way. You half cock it and spin the cylinder, but you had to load it from the front. You, know, you got this plunger tube and everything. You had to push the ball, pour the powder in here, push the ball down in there with this lever, and then put caps on all the nipples around for each chamber, and then cock it and it was ready to go. This is a Civil War model right here. This was the 1860. Uh, Colt Army, and it was used in uh, Civil War quite extensively. I believe there were, uh, I don't know the number, hundreds of thousands of them I think made. So that's a very common gun, it's very common. The cap and ball from the 1840s up till about the 18, uh, late 1860s was uh, the way that uh, the West went. They carried uh, those uh, if they wanted a revolver. Sam Colt came up with that and then uh, later 
even actually it was after he died, I think, before they came up with the board through cylinder where it would actually take a cartridge uh, as we know today. All right, so Colt single action army. Let me fire just a couple more. Uh, let's see, let's fire. Well, let's just fire uh, the other one since that one still has the brass in it. Let's see, which one of these was I firing with black powder? You might see I've got a little smoked up on me. I, uh, I fired a couple of black powder rounds before we started filming. And let me show you what that looks like. Because in the old days, that's what they fired, black powder, uh, in the cartridges. Now, most people, when they think of black powder, they think of a muzzle loader. But these are actually black powder cartridges right here, because uh, I made them. All right, now that gun is ready to go. You talk about the Wild West, this is what it looked like, OK? Black powder cartridges. Let me get this old cowboy again. I told you to get out of here. See the smoke? <laughs> that's what it would have looked like, okay? And that's what it should look like and smell like. At least that's what it should look like in the, the westerns if they want to make it authentic, okay? Now that really makes that gun dirty. That was an act of love to shoot black powder in that for you. That's hard to clean. All right? So Colt Signal Action Army, uh, if you want to see more of those, check out some of my other videos. And I will do some more in the future because these are one of my favorite guns there and here's one of my first loves to old double barrel shotgun stagecoach gun this one's unloaded as you can see and this one doesn't have hammers I think when I had out in an earlier video if I brought the hammer gun out I thought I'd just shoot this one today let's uh let's cut this thing loose but you know what I'm gonna do first that I didn't do in those last five shots and I was the first to know I didn't put my ears on there we go all right let's shoot something Ooh, someone hung a cookie pan right there. Let's just shoot it. <laughs> Let's shoot it again. <laughs> All right. Woo, see that smoke? Oh, there's a paper target. I wonder if I can hit that. <laughs> We've got a couple more. Let's fire a couple. Oh, cowboy. <laughs> Can you imagine? If you've seen the movie Open Range, they, uh, they touch one of these off inside a saloon. Uh, Kevin Costner does, I guess. And it really sounds authentic. And there is quite a bit of smoke. Uh, and, and to me, that's one of the most authentic scenes because when he shoots that sign inside the saloon, it's go boom, and uh, the smoke bellows out. Uh, so they, they actually tried to simulate what I just did with it right there. But inside a building, can you imagine you know, how smoky it just got here? So the old shotgun is uh, it's fun to shoot. Now that barrel's really warm. Black powder heats it up a great deal. And then the other gun that was just uh, synonymous with the Wild West is a lever gun. This is an 1873 uh, Winchester. It's actually U Birdie, but this is the 1873. And this is the gun that they ought to be carrying in most of the Westerns, where they're carrying an 1892 Winchester. John Wayne carried an 1892 Winchester in almost all of his Westerns, I think, even though the setting was supposed to be prior to 1892, but that's all right. But this is the gun that uh, when it came out in 1873, it just stormed the market, and uh, it's, 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 everybody's loved this gun, and uh, it's fun to shoot. Let's load him up. Uh, the lever gun, let's start out with just regular ammo. Right? You have a loading gate on these babies, and you just punch them in. There's a movie made about this gun. I noticed some, uh, some people load it like this. They'll push one to that point, and they'll just punch the next one in like that. In fact, I saw that in the movie. I think it was the 1873 Winchester movie with Jimmy Stewart. I'd never even thought about doing that. I don't know if it's unsafe or, or why people don't. I just push them on in there uh, like this, generally. But I know in some of these lever guns, that, uh, that little gate there pinches you, and that might be why some people do that. But anyway, this is oops, a very common gun. You work the lever, it brings a round up, and puts it in the chamber. Okay, I'm going to let the hammer down and get my ear in here. As I pointed out in some of my other videos, 
uh, you're not, you weren't exactly unarmed with these guns. They don't look quite as dangerous as uh, an AR-15, but boy, they are, they're fun to shoot and you can, you can send some lead down range with them. Buffalo honey, or not buffalo, uh, ram honey. <laughs> Got him. Let's go for another ram. Whoop, we're out of bullets. Let's put one in real quick. Don't have any back here. Pretty quick to load. There's four rounds back in. Without a lot of time to spend it. Oh, we went under him. There we go. <laughs> So, you've seen this gun before maybe in some of my videos, but again, in the overview of the Wild West here, just wanted to show you some of the main guns that were used back then. The 1873 Winchester, it was everywhere. It was everywhere, at least after 1873, even though it was chambered for the 4440 round, okay? And then the old side-by-side -side shotgun, uh, commonly referred to as a stagecoach gun, lots of fun to shoot, uh, even with normal powder but with black powder it's even more fun not fun to clean not fun to clean uh i won't shoot any black in the lever gun i guess before we go here's one last gun of the west this was a very common gun you may have seen this in the video too this is the big bore uh if you were in the mountains after 1886 you might have had something like this this is the winchester 1886 model and it fires a much bigger bullet uh buffalo round 4570 uh the government round let's fire just a couple of those real quick you know, yeah, I've got some there. Yeah, let's put some of those in. These are 405 grain bullets. And uh, I think I shoot this gun in another video of mine or two. But it was a very, uh, I say popular, it was a fairly popular, this 1886 model because it was uh, so smooth. It's like butter. This is generally considered like the ultimate lever gun ever made, one of the most. Uh, on the revered, it's big, it's heavy, but it's very smooth, and it's just a really nice shooter. Okay, same thing, got to lever it, bring it around out of the tube and up into the chamber. And what I'm about to do is shoot again without my ears on. So let's put those on, and let's pick it back up, and let's fire away. Let's go out to 80, see if I can hit that gong. That's a little bit bigger, carries quite a punch and a, a nice rifle too. So the 1886 uh, Big Boar Buffalo gun, the 1873 uh, shoots really more of a pistol cartridge, a 4440 or this one is chambered in 45 Colt. And then of course the 12 gauge coach gun. The, uh, the little review again, the cap and ball and the pistol arena uh, up until the late 1860s. That's what you had to do, generally, uh, to, to fire your pistol. You had to load it from the front and then put nipples on each, or caps on each nipple. And uh, we'll shoot that in the video, too, at some point. And then, of course, the, in 1873, you know, this thing just took the market. This was kind of the Glock of the day, really. This was uh, what I consider the Glock of, of uh, the 1870s and 1880s. It was just very, very, very common and very popular. Uh, feels like a glove, fits your hand like a glove, shoots very well. Just, uh, and all three barrels, all three barrel lengths. I'm often asked which barrel length I prefer. All of them. I like the seven and a half, I like the five and a half, I like the four and three quarters. They all feel great. Yeah. A little word before we go about my dress here. Uh, you know, speaking of the guns, the cow, real cowboys back in there, they wore their guns up high like this. They didn't wear them down there slapping their knee. You know, it would have been very, very bothersome to, to wear a gun like that. They didn't necessarily wear this uh, shotgun pouch. Some of this is for competition that I've used in uh, sass matches, cowboy matches. And they didn't wear two guns very, very often. We, in matches, we shoot 10 rounds without loading, so everybody carries two guns. But generally, they would carry one pistol, of course. And they'd carry it up high where it was uh, fairly comfortable. 
they liked vests because pants and shirts typically didn't have pockets back then and they had pockets on their vests they could carry their watch didn't have a lot of electronic uh, wrist watches back in the 1870s so they could carry their pocket watch there uh, and coins you know in their pocket if they uh, have you know cell phone they need to text somebody they had that handy or if they just want to listen to some music when they're on their uh, horse uh, watching the cattle on a cattle drive you know lots of pockets there for that kind of thing so uh, I'm not decked out in ex exactly uh, authentically necessarily but uh, I try to come at least close to it when I go to a cowboy match so got everything else I think halfway close uh, so just a word or two about that Wild Bill Hickok uh, if you haven't shot the guns of the West, the Wild West, if you're just a Glock man or a Sig man or whatever, I encourage you to try these things. They're so much fun. So much fun. They suited me quite well, Wild Bill Hickok, back in Abilene. So you need to try it. Glad you could come by this afternoon.